Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. And yep, the shelves are up. So what are we going to learn in today's video? Well, today I'm going to teach you guys how to pull off this really cool glitch effect. Here's the thing though, you have to be patient. There's a lot of keyframing, there's a lot of movement going on, there's a couple of different layers to go through, but I think the end result is really going to be well worth it. Here's the good news. We can always leave a copy of this in our project manager. So if we ever want to use this for future videos, we just edit it in our project manager, export it as a finished movie, bring it back in, and we can either use it as a title on a black background, but let's say if you want to use it on top of your video like I just did, go into the blending modes, use screen, and there it will appear. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Okay, and step number one is going to bring in some actual text. So let's go ahead and hit the plus sign and we will choose main title. Let's stretch this out for about 15 seconds. So as I explained before, when we're bringing it into our next video for future videos, uh, we can increase the speed on this. So we want a nice long starting point to begin with. So let's double tap this so that we can edit it. So if you notice down here, there's no speed icon. So we can't change the speed of this now, but when we re-import it as a finished movie, then we can double the speed or we can triple the speed if we want. So let's tap the, the text, hit the pencil and paper, and choose whatever it is that we are going to use for the title or the text. I'm always going to use my Apple Pencil from now on because I don't want fingerprint gate again. That was disgusting. I really like the Avenir font, you guys. I think it's really plain and clean and simple. And I think the mid-30s is a relatively good size. And I also like to pull down the opacity a little bit into the low 80s. So let's go to frame and fit so we can begin all of the actions that we're going to do. First of all, hit the left arrow key so we're all the way to the very beginning. The very first thing that we wanna do is pull the title right off the screen and drop our very first keyframe. Now, being that we dropped our first keyframe, every time we move the title up and down, it's going to drop its very own keyframe. And we are going to move this title up and down a bunch of times every four frames, and we're not going to do it cleanly. I am not going to use the Y arrow, the Y axis to do it. I'm just going to move it around. Don't forget, this is a glitch effect, so the messier, the better. And here we go. One, two, three, four, we're gonna move it up. One, two, three, four, move it down. One, two, three, four, move it up. One, two, three, four, move it back down. One, two, three, four, move it up. One, two, three, four, move it down. And we are just going to continue to do this until it reaches a little over three seconds. Now I'm at about three and a half seconds. So the very next action that we're going to do one, two, three, four. We're going to advance the four frames. And when I move it up again, this is the position where I'm going to leave the title when it's static on the screen for a few seconds so that it can actually be read. And I think right about there is good. The only thing that I am going to do is just center it on the X axis and it wound up being perfect. So now what we're going to do is back out of this, go back to the main screen. I'm just going to condense that a little bit. And let's hit the plus sign again. We are going to choose overlay title again and let's stretch this out. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can always trim it at the end. Let's double tap this one to get into the edit window. Okay, so secret here. If you guys have made it this far in the video, I am going to share a link for this glitch effect in my comment section. Probably underneath all of the links, there is going to be a link to a Google Drive. And there I'm going to post uh, this glitch effect. Download it and open it up in LumaFusion and you will receive it as a LumaFusion project package. So it's going to go in your project manager, not your imported window. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do right here is just throw this away. Let's hit the plus sign. And what we're going to choose here is shape. And let's go down to the one pixel line. I'm going to get down to the sliders for the size of this. I am going to make this small on the X factor. 
And I'm also going to make it smaller on the Y. So a nice thin line. And we can duplicate that by hitting the second plus sign. And I am just going to pull this down. Let's duplicate it again. So the idea here is we want a bunch of broken lines that really make no rhyme or reason or any sense. They're just going to be looking glitchy and that's why we're doing this. Once we've created a few lines, let's go to frame and fit. Let's hit our left arrow to make sure we're all the way back to the very beginning. Let's go ahead and pull these lines off the screen and drop our very first keyframe. Same thing here, every time we move these lines now, it's going to drop its own keyframe, so we don't have to worry about that. With these lines, I'm not going to do it every four frames. I'm actually going to move the lines every two frames. So one, two, bring the lines up a little bit. One, two, bring the lines down a little bit. Now, the reason that I made a note of where those lines were in the screen, do you see how LumaFusion is not keeping up with the lines? I don't know why this is doing this. I literally made this video 10 times yesterday. It just kept crashing on me. I actually used less lines, hoping that it would work. Apparently, it's not going to. So that's why I made a note that the lines are actually in the middle here. So I'm going to line up where they are from here. Going to be right about on the word. One, two, pull it down. One, two, one, two, pull it down. One, two, one, two. Like I said, I'm not always going to have the lines in there. But when I do, I want to move it every two frames. And sometimes every one frame, it really depends on how glitchy you want your effect. See, the funny thing is, I don't even really know what this is going to look like until I back this out and see what it, you know, as a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's back out right here and just, I guess they don't look too bad. Okay, let's finish now. So I'm basically just doing it every two frames. Okay, with the last action here, we're going to leave these pulled off the screen. And like I said, that's going to drop its own keyframe when we do that. What the heck? I don't know what is going on with LumaFusion, but it just is not really cooperating, you guys. I know it doesn't look good right here, right now, but when we speed it up, it's going to look very glitchy. Let's double tap on our very first layer. There's just a few notes I want to make here. Okay, so it's going to remain static at 3.18 seconds. So what I want to do with the title is make it stay static on the screen for at least a, a total of about three seconds. So what we want to do is pull this out for a total of four seconds right now. So we're going to add four seconds to 418. So that is going to be 718. We're going to bring that up to because I am going to drop an effect. Hopefully it works. I couldn't get it to work yesterday. So I don't even know if that's going to work. What I'm going to do is send a ripple down through where it says title glitch to make it look like an old TV that's sort of glitching how everything moves down in a wave. That's what I'm envisioning for this particular glitch effect. I hope I can get it to work. And that is going to stay static on the screen. So we are going to drop a keyframe right there. And this is where I want to begin adding that ripple in. So what I have to do here is duplicate this. Bring it up and throw it right on top there. And what I'm going to do is go to this top layer. We want to go to cropping. We are going to pull this up from the bottom so that this word is completely gone. We don't want it to show. Let's go back to the beginning and just drop a keyframe to make sure that happens. Okay, so let's go back to cropping. So we know, let's drop another keyframe right here at 718. So at, I'm going to advance it a frame at 719 and what I'm going to do is, oh, actually let's close cropping and go to size and position. I am going to move the X over about a point because when it ripples down, it needs to expose a word that's not completely centered with the word underneath it. So that is going to set that. Okay, so now what we wanna do is go back to cropping. What I'm going to do is advance another two seconds. So 919 right there. And I'm going to drop my keyframe right there and I am going to pull down the bottom so that 
the new word is completely exposed. So what I want to do here is go to the bottom layer, go to frame and fit, go to cropping, and at 719, we are going to add a keyframe here and we are going to pull down the top so that the top is all the way down to the top of that word. Let's advance another two seconds, so 919. And now same thing here, we are just going to pull that top down until it is completely covered. So let's see how it looks out here. Boom, perfect, like an old fashioned glitch effect. Now that the top layer is the one that's exposed, let's go back, double tap that one, go to frame and fit, and now what we're going to do is figure out what is happening as far as how much longer are we going to leave this word static on the screen. And I think we are going to leave it static on the screen uh, for at least another two seconds at this point. So let's drop a keyframe there and advance it another two seconds. So 1119, drop another keyframe advance a keyframe, and now we're going to pull it down. So here again is where we're at the point where we advance it four frames and move it back up. Advance it four frames, move it down. Advance it four frames, move it up. Advance it four frames, move it down. And I think that's basically long enough. So let's go back to the middle layer where we had those lines. And what we're going to do with the lines is same thing here again. Once everything becomes unstatic, we are again going to move those lines every so often. So right here, we're gonna drop our next keyframe just to lock everything in. And don't forget our lines are going to be in the middle where these two dots are. And I'm just going to move these every two frames or maybe every frame, it depends, or maybe miss a few frames. That's the deal with the glitch effect. The glitchier, the better. At this point, now we're going to lock this off the screen and just leave it there. Okay, so let's go ahead. So this actually looks like it's working pretty well. And like I said, it doesn't look great in this way because we are going to make it much faster when we re-import it in as its own movie. It's literally going to move this fast when we re-import it in. Yesterday, what I had done to add a little bit of extra glitch, what I'm gonna do right now is just leave that. I am going to open the project manager, and I'm going to duplicate this just by hitting the second plus arrow, and that's going to duplicate that. So let's go ahead and get into this. What I had done here, let's go to this top layer. Remember where I had cropped out everything and I made sure I cropped out the entire word? What I had done yesterday was I just left a little, like a fraction. Oh, let me just X out of that. Go to this one. I had left um, a fraction of those words exposed, like the very top of the letters. This way, when you go to uh, size and position, I was moving this around and making it even more glitchy. But I think that's where the problem was and why LumaFusion kept crashing. It just was a little too much for the system to handle. I really don't understand why, but it was. But I think that this extra little effect added like an extra cool factor, I thought. So I'm gonna try to do this one more time and I will post both glitch effects. Let's go back to the original glitch effect that I had just done. So once again, you know, once that's done, boom, and off the screen, I am just going to trim the rest of this away. So trim and boom. So we are always going to leave this in our project manager as glitch effect. But if we want to edit that title, obviously we go ahead and we duplicate that. And then we go into the secondary one and we just add, we change whatever the name is. Let's say you want it to read, uh, I don't know, my vlog, we'll put done. Just go out and edit the second line Same thing, just change the words to whatever it is that you want. Boom, done. And that will 
change that. Let's go ahead and export this as its own movie to uh, my iCloud drive so that I can re-import it and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so let's go to my cloud and here it is right there as its own finished movie. So let's highlight that and send it back in to LumaFusion. So let's go ahead and open something else here. Okay, so let's go imported other app, Glitch Effect 2020. So there it is. So let's go ahead and double tap that now you'll see the gear icon. There is the gear icon. So let's go ahead and hit the gear icon. Now we're going to eh, maybe a little more than double. How about 2.25? That looks good to me. And we want to go to frame and fit and go to blending. And now we are going to use the screen blending mode. There you go. And that is going to make that appear. Perfect. And that's how you do something and then export it and then re-import it. And this is going to be a wrap for me. Listen, I know this was a longer than usual video. I apologize, but I like when you guys have the knowledge that you need to do things on your own. But like I said, there are going to be links in the description to this particular glitch effect a little bit of a different glitch effect. Also, there's going to be a link to uh, the dramatic title intro, the fade in and fade out title intro. And there was something else. Somebody requested that I do the chroma king where you can see the underlying movie through the letters. I do have that file, but I made it for an Instagram post. And I also don't know how well that's going to translate if we don't share the same font packages. So I will post that as well. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'll give it a whirl. And that's going to do it here today. Thank you very much for tuning in. And until next time, please wear your sunblock.